Former President Donald Trump has been charged with falsifying business records. I'm Jeff Pierre, and this is The 7 from The Washington Post. It's Wednesday, April 5th. Let's get you caught up with today's seven stories. Trump made his first court appearance yesterday in New York. He pleaded not guilty to 34 felony counts brought by a grand jury last week. The charges are tied to hush money paid to an adult film star during the 2016 presidential campaign. Prosecutors say the payments violated election law and that Trump falsified records to cover them up. Trump is the first former president in U.S. history to be charged with a crime. He's also the focus of several other criminal investigations. Number two, there were key elections in Wisconsin and Chicago yesterday. In Wisconsin, liberals claimed a major win. Voters elected Janet Protasiewicz to the state Supreme Court. That gives liberals a majority on the court for the first time in 15 years. Protasiewicz spoke about her win last night. Our state is taking a step forward to a better and brighter future where our rights and freedoms will be protected. And while there is still work to be done, tonight we celebrate this historic victory that has obviously reignited hope in so many of us. This will have a major impact on key decisions the court could soon make about abortion, redistricting, and voting rules. In Chicago, Democrat Brandon Johnson, a county commissioner, was projected to become the mayor of the nation's third largest city, defeating conservative Democrat Paul Vallis. Number three, the U.S. will give another $2.6 billion of aid to Ukraine. The U.S. will send more air defense systems. It'll include gun trucks and laser-guided weapons, plus some much-needed ammunition. The aid is coming at a critical point in the war. Ukraine's fight against Russia has reached a stalemate, and neither side can make gains without a major advantage in weaponry or force size. Johnson & Johnson offered $8.9 billion to settle baby powder claims. That's story number four. The company faces tens of thousands of claims that talc and its popular product caused cancer. The settlement was proposed yesterday. It'll need approval from a bankruptcy court. So is talc powder harmful? The FDA says there is a possible link between the use of the powders and ovarian cancer, but it hasn't been conclusively proven. But you should know, Johnson & Johnson stopped selling the powder globally last year. Number five. Thunderstorms erupted in central states last night. Some of the storms were severe. They stretched from southern Wisconsin through western Kansas. Tornadoes were reported in west-central Illinois and eastern Iowa. In the northern plains, a major winter storm is underway. Blizzard warnings spanned from Wyoming into Nebraska, then northward into the Dakotas and Minnesota. U.S. lawmakers want to help save the quote-unquote boring animals, too. That's story number six. It's easy to get everyone behind saving the bald eagle, mountain lions, and other animals that are iconic or even cute. But the less exciting animals can get overlooked, even though they're just as important for our ecosystems. That's where a recently reintroduced bipartisan Senate bill comes in. It would provide $1.4 billion to state wildlife agencies every year with the requirement that the money goes to species with the greatest conservation need. These agencies often don't have enough money and prioritize the most charismatic animals instead of the most vulnerable. Lawmakers are still working out the funding details, but they're cautiously optimistic about the bill's chances. Okay, for this last story, you really have to listen. That's the sound a tomato plant makes when it's cut or if it's dehydrated. Researchers at Tel Aviv University brought these sounds to life by recording them and manipulating the frequency so that human ears can hear them. We'll play it again.
And here's what a grapevine sounds like. Pretty weird and cool, right? But it's more than that. This research could help farmers learn when crops need water or are diseased. It also opens the possibility that plants can communicate with insects or other plants. And just like that, you are all caught up. If you're looking for an afternoon listen, the latest episode of Post Reports examines what Trump's arraignment means. Don't forget to hit subscribe. I'm Jeff Pierre, and I'll meet you back here tomorrow. 